Hello, pre-calculus. Today we are going to do section 2.3 and um, it's broke apart into like a day one and a day two. So this video is just going to be the day one. Uh, polynomial long and synthetic division. So you did this in algebra two. We're just going to review it. We are going to divide example 1a. We're going to divide it by using long division. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to rewrite the x minus 2 on the outside of that division bar, x squared plus 3x minus 10. And while we, write, while we are writing these um, polynomials down, we always want to make sure that we aren't skipping any powers of x in our terms. So we've got x to the second, x to the first, and then over here, this is like x to the zero. We don't have to write it because it's x to the zero, which is one. So I'm gonna erase that. But we don't wanna ever like skip any powers. So just like in long division, the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna divide, but we're only gonna divide the x into the x squared to start. If you can't do that by just looking at it over here, I'm gonna write x squared divided by x, and I'm gonna say, well, that is x. And I'm gonna put that answer right up there. So we divide. Then what we're gonna do is we are going to multiply um, and it's gonna be using the distributive property. So I'm gonna multiply this x times the x, which is x squared, and I'm gonna multiply the x times the minus two which is minus two X. The next thing we do is we subtract, which I'm going to actually add the opposite, which is the same thing as subtraction. So I'm gonna draw the line, then I'm gonna change all my signs. So there's my subtraction. Draw the line, change the signs, now I can add it. Um, so I'm gonna add those together, they're gonna cancel out. I'm gonna add these together, I get five X. And then our fourth step is to bring it on down and bring it on back and you're going to start over. So I'm bringing down the minus 10 and then we're going to restart over with X and this time into 5X. So 5X divided by X is 5. So that's positive. I'm going to put plus five up there. Now I'm going to multiply, which is distributing the five to the uh, X and the minus two. So I get five X minus 10, which is nice to see because our next step is to subtract, which is draw the line, change the signs. Maybe I should write that here too. Draw the line, change the signs. When I add, we get zero. So we divided by long division. Our quotient, which is our answer to the division problem, is x plus 5. So if I kind of want to summarize everything I just did, I just um, found out that um, x squared plus 3x minus 10 divided by x minus 2 equals x plus 5. If I went backwards, I could say that x plus 5 multiplied by x minus 2 is equal to x squared plus 3x minus 10. So that's multiplying back to check your answer. All right, second question. I think I'm going to have to write a little bit smaller here. I'm not quite sure if I'm going to run out of space or not. All right, we're going to start with 3x plus 2, and then I've got 9x to the fourth. If I have to the fourth power, the next power I need to write is x to the third. But there isn't a term with x to the third, so I have to put it in. If I don't put it in, I'm probably going to get stuck and mess up. So it is best to put it in. Then we have 14x to the second. 
then I need a term with x to the first, which there isn't one. I don't know why I made that a, z a minus. Um, so I'm just going to put x to the first with a zero in front of it. And then we have no x's with our minus 8. So now we can, we can start by divide. So I'm going to divide 9x to the fourth by 3x. The 9 by 3 gives me 3. And the x to the fourth over x give me, gives me x to the, to the th oh my gosh, x to the third. There we go. Now we multiply by distributing. So I get 9x to the fourth plus 6x to the third. We draw the line and change the signs. I add those together. These cancel out. I get negative 6x to the third. Then we bring it on down. And we bring it on back to the beginning and we start over. 3x goes into negative 6x to the third. So negative 6x to the third divided by 3x gives us a negative 2x to the second. Multiply, I've got to multiply that negative 2x to the second to 3x. So that's going to be negative 6x to the third. Multiply the negative 2x squared by the 2, so minus 4x squared. Draw the line, change the signs, and we uh, these cancel out, and we get 18x to the second. Bring it on down, and then bring it on back, so we start over again. 3x goes into 18x squared. We get 6x. So I'm, I'm going to distribute that 6x to the 3x. So that's 18x squared. Distribute the 6x to the 2. So that's 12x. Draw the line. Change the signs. Add them together. I get negative 12x. Oops, I meant to be black. Negative 12x. Bring it on down bring it on back. So now we do 3x into negative 12x, which is negative 4. We multiply that. So negative 12x minus 8. Draw the line, change the signs, those cancel, those cancel, we get 0. So our quotient, our final quotient is 3x to the third minus 2x squared plus 6x minus 4. By the way, the, the reason why I knew I was done is because there wasn't anything else out here to bring down. That's how I knew I was done. I meant to say that earlier. All right. We've got x squared minus 1. That is missing an x term. So I'm going to have to put in an x term. x cubed plus 9x squared. That's missing an x term also. So I'll put in a 0x minus 5. Now I'm going to divide x squared into x cubed. Can't do that in your head. You go over here, x cubed divided by x squared. That leaves, you, leaves me with 1x, which I'm going to distribute to all three terms. So we get x cubed plus 0x squared minus x. Draw the line, change the signs. Those will cancel. This is 9x squared, and this is plus x. Bring it on down. And that was the last thing to bring down, so we only have one more step. Bring it on back. I'm going to take x squared into 9x squared, which gives me 9 left over. I'm going to distribute that. So I get uh, 9x squared plus 0x minus 9. So we're going to draw the line. Oops, that was my wrong color. Draw the line, change the signs. And those cancel. This gives me an x. And then this is a plus 4. <clears throat> 
Now, what we have is we have a remainder. We're not really going to do anything with the remainder other than write it like a mixed number in, um, in, in like fractions. Like if I did 7 divided by 3, you would take 3 into 7 two times and you'd have a remainder of 1 and you put it over the divisor 3. That's what we're doing. By the way, this is this 2 and 1 third means 2 plus 1 third. That's what it means. So I'm going to use that concept and I'm going to apply it to our answer here. So we've got x plus 9. Then we have a remainder. So I'm going to add x plus 4 over the original divisor, which was x squared minus 1. So that's how you're going to write your answer, the remainder over the divisor, add it on to the end if you have one. All right, synthetic division. You, If you remember this at all, you were like, yep, that's the one I like. <laughs> synthetic division, but you can only use it when we have something like x minus, uh, oh shoot, I forget what they, what letter they normally use here. I'll just put it like n, if you have x minus n. <clears throat> Um, you have to have x has to be to the first power and the coefficient on x is only 1. If we have that situation, if the divisor, if the divisor is, I don't know if it said divisor. Does it say that? No, if the divisor is in the form of x minus a number, x has to be the first power and the coefficient in front of the x can only be one, then you're allowed to use synthetic division. And synthetic division is long division, just way shorthanded. So what you do first is you find x minus three you find what would make that zero. And what would make that zero is a positive three. And this becomes your box number. So we go over here and we draw a little side box and we put that three in there. And then we use the coefficients of the top equation or of the, uh, hold on, this is divisor, dividend. I think it's dividend. Okay, so we're going to use the coefficients for that. So we've got 1x to the third, then we've got negative 11x to the second, and then look, we have no x's, so we do need to have that 0x in there. 0x's, and then 6. So these here are kind of like placeholders, where they're just the number in front, but we just know that this is x to the third, x to the second, x to the first, x to the zero. That's why we have to have this here, because we have to, just like if you had the number uh, 705, you would need the zero there, because it's holding the tens place. So that's what this zero is doing. Then we're going to skip a line, and we're going to draw a line, and this is going to be like a plus sign. And what you're going to do is you're going to first add 1, and there's nothing under it. So you're going to add 1 to nothing, which gives us 1. Then we multiply 1 times 3, and we put the answer under the next number. Now we add. So 11, negative 11 plus 3 is negative 8. So now I multiply that, and we put it under the next number, a negative 24. Then we add that together, and I get negative 24. Then we multiply that, negative 72. And we add it together with the 6, and we get negative 66. Now, as soon as I put my last number, I always box up that number. This is our remainder. <coughs> uh, 
<clears throat> the numbers at the bottom. I got a lot of lines here. I'm sorry, guys. Um, this is the coefficients. Oops. I don't know that. Coefficients of the quotient. Now, we started with a degree. Our problem had a degree of three. We divided by a degree of one. So if you have a degree of three, you divide out one of those powers, you're gonna be left with a degree of two when you're done. So that's telling me that the first number um, in the quotient that has a coefficient of one is going to be x to the second. Then we have a minus eight, and that goes down a power x. Then we have a minus 24, and that has zero x's. And then we have our remainder, which is minus 66, and we put it over the divisor of x minus three. Now, the only thing I would change is I wouldn't actually write the one in front, but I wanted to make sure you were following where I got it from. So now I'm gonna do another problem, but without all that crazy um, directional angles. Okay, <clears throat> so this one starts with a degree of three. So we're going to divide a degree of one. So when we're done, the quotient is gonna be a degree it's going to write the word quotient. The quotient is going to be the degree oops, of two. All right. Um, X plus two equals zero. X equals negative two. That's going to be our box number. We're going to write down the coefficients. Two is X cubed. Five is X squared. Five is X and six is the constant and there's no need for zeros. We're gonna start adding. We add two plus nothing, we get two. Then we multiply two times negative two is negative four. We add one, multiply negative two, add three, multiply negative six, remainder is zero. So our answer for this one, we have to go down a degree of two, is gonna start with two x to the second, plus one x, plus three, and no remainder, so I don't have to write anything for the remainder. And then question C, I'm gonna do X minus two equals zero. So my box number is gonna be two. Um, this starts with a degree of five and we're dividing by a degree of one, which is gonna leave us with an answer that has a degree of four. So we've got our two X to the fifth. We need an X to the fourth and there isn't one. So I have to have that placeholder. We have a negative three X to the third. We do not have an X to the second. We have a negative 10 X and then we have a seven. So I'm gonna add the two with nothing and get two, multiply, get four, add, get four, multiply, get eight, add, get five, multiply, get 10. Add to 10, multiply, get 20. Add, we get 10 again, multiply, get 20. And then we get 27 as a remainder. So now I'm gonna rewrite my answer as the quotient. I'm gonna start with that um, coefficient of two and I'm gonna put it with a degree of four. X to the fourth plus four X to the third plus five X to the second plus 10 X plus 10 plus the remainder of 27 over X minus two. All right, the last section is using synthetic division, sorry, synthetic division to find each 
function value. Verify your answer using another method. <clears throat> so this is called the, oh, I'm gonna have to look it up. It's some, it's like remainder theorem, I think. Remainder theorem. This is the remainder theorem. And it says, if you're gonna do G of two, using synthetic division, we're going to make two the little box number. And we're going to use synthetic division. And we're going to get, let's see, x to the sixth is one. x to the fifth, there isn't one. x to the fourth is negative four. x to the third, there is not one. x to the second is three. There isn't an x to the first. And two is the number by itself. Then we're going to add. We're going to multiply, add, multiply. Add, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add that, multiply, and finally add, and we get 14. G of 2, unless I made a silly mistake here, because <laughs> I'm a little bit tired, um, unless I made a silly mistake here, G of 2 should be the value 14. So this says verify your answer using another method. So another method would be the old way that we usually will always turn to 2 to the 6 minus 4. What am I doing? It's not 2. Yes, it is. Sorry. 2, <laughs> two to the 4th plus 3, 2 to the 2nd plus 2. Now you could type that in your calculator. Let's see how fast I can do it without the calculator. This would be three times four, 12 plus two equals 14. So same answer either way, but um, you're going to specifically use this method because this is what you are learning new. Once we're done learning it and you've been assessed on it and you say, yep, I can do it that way, then it doesn't really matter which method you choose. So one more practice with this. Negative four would be the box number. I need to copy my values. We had one, zero, negative four, zero, three, zero, two. Adding, multiplying, adding, multiplying. No, oh, no, big numbers. Okay. Um, yeah. Let's see. That would be close to fifty times four. All right. I was gonna. I was gonna pull out my calculator, and then I said, "No, I can do it." Minus two times four. So that'd be two hundred minus eight. So that would be one ninety-two plus three, so that'd be 195. So 195 would be like, or four times 195 would be like um, four times 200, oh my gosh. Four times 200 minus four times five. So 800 minus 20 is 780. Only it's negative. I forgot my negative sign. So we've got negative 780. And we're going to multiply that. Oh my gosh, my number's getting monstrous. I hope I'm doing this right. I hope I didn't make a silly mistake here. I guess I'll find out when I check my answer with another value. All right, I'm going to do this just the long way. Negative 780 times negative 4. Just put that on the wrong number. <laughs> so it'll be 28 plus 3 is 31. Oops, and it's positive. 3120. Add that together and you get 3122. All right, going to check my answer with another method. So we'll have g of negative 4 equals. Negative 4 to the 6 minus 4 times negative 4 to the 4th 
plus 3 times negative 4 squared plus 2. I am going to cheat. I'm going to use my calculator. This video is already long enough. And I got three, one, two, two. There you go. I was able to make it with synthetic division, but with long division, I was like, not long division. I mean, with just um, plugging it in, I was not going to do that without my calculator. But I was able to do it with, with, with synthetic division. So that's kind of cool. All right. So that is the end of today's, or I should say the day one lesson. In my next video, I will cover day two. Have a great day. Thanks for watching.